Today I'm going to take you through a set of the Smarter Science Steps to Inquiry posters. Uh, this is the first set. This is the one that we use with beginners. Again, it depends on whether you're... The beginner doesn't necessarily mean uh, primary class. It could be a grade 12 class that's just starting with the process. Uh, and the activity I'm going to use is... Uh, you may be familiar with the gyrocopter, these paper gyrocopters that uh, you can um, have the kids observe what's, what's, what's happening with those and try to modify them. Um, we actually use a little different model. We use the penguin. Often what we're doing with these uh, uh, is we're leading into them with some sort of literacy connection or there's a book. So often we'll, we'll do a forward with this. It'll be a book on um, penguins, for example. And you can follow up with, with this. Um, the posters themselves lead the kids through. Um, there are four posters. The first step we look at is observing. We have the first two here. We're looking at making the kids, asking the kids to make their observations. They then want, uh, come up with some questions, some wondering. Okay, we have them do some work, and then we talk about organizing the variables here. Okay, so the very first stage in this is for us to have the object available for the students to make their observations on. Okay, so in this case we have the penguin. Okay, the challenge is for the students to then observe what's happening. Okay, so there's your observation. So as a teacher you would drop the penguin a couple of times, okay, and ask them to make their observations. The students would have copies of these posters at their desks or you may have them working in groups where they would have master copies that they would be all contributing to. The students would also have post-it notes. Okay, The post-it notes that they would start off with uh, would be, well, in this case we'll just make them yellow, yellow post-it notes. The students would then give me observations or give you observations. So what they would notice is that it would, let's say they would popcorn out, it would fall. Okay, So when you write fall on the post-it note, that goes here under one of their observations. Students do the same. They put the word fall down. They would also maybe notice that it's spinning. Okay? It spins as it falls. Okay? You may have to drop the penguin a couple more times just to get the, the more information out of them. At this point, uh, you will have students in the class that are rushing ahead with, with observations. You'll have students within the class that are staying with you and there you'll have students in your class that don't know what to write to begin with. They're not sure what you mean by observation. So you've differentiated for the entire class with this process. Okay? So, they're spinning, it's falling. Um, they'll also notice that it may fall a little bit. falls straight before it starts to spin. Okay? So those are the kinds of things that will go up here. Okay? Now, what I made in this, in a situation like this, I would want to suggest to them that we want to concentrate. What a scientist does is they concentrate on one observation at a time. They want to measure one thing. And in this class, I as this, I'm a teacher, I know where I want them to go. I want them to concentrate on the falling and how much time it takes it to fall. So because they've already mentioned falling here, we're going to focus our attention on measuring or observing the fall. Okay? And we can measure or observe that by looking at the time it takes to fall. Okay? We move that one post-it over to focus their attention on one variable or one aspect. Okay? The challenge then to the students is for them to recreate what I've done here. So they're given materials, okay? They are, they, so they will have uh, photocopies of this little penguin model. They will also have post-it notes and they will also have access to paper clips. So their first challenge is to duplicate exactly what the penguins being able to do. Okay, so they're, they've had a look at it, they've made their observations. They are going to focus their attention on the time that it takes to fall. They need to replicate that their object falls at the same rate that mine does. Okay, so your students have been working with the penguin, dropping the penguin and trying to get it to uh, perform the same way as, as yours did. And you directed them to concentrate on the fall time, how much time it took for the object to fall. 
Now, depending on the level of your class and the instrumentation that's available, you may they may be using stopwatches, video cameras, or in a primary class, uh, what we found is that they're not very good at using stopwatches, but they can sing happy birthday. They can decide what they want to sing. And singing is a very good way for them to uh, measure all kinds of events. So it depends on the complexity. What you'll be able to do though, is collect a class set now of your control state, which means everybody was supposed to be doing everything exactly the same way. They were all trying to duplicate that original uh, situation. So given that, why uh, you, can, you can then post the data as an entire class set and go and talk about the reasons for the differences in those class sets, okay? You can also talk about how close is close enough. Uh, do you wanna be within a tenth of a second? Is a half a second okay? Is one second okay for this event? So those are the kinds of things. You, with senior classes, you can get into all kinds of uh, discussions around systematic and random error, those sorts of things. So again, you have a class set of data now that you can make your comparisons with, okay? Once you've done that, now the kids are in, in a position, they've had, they've had some experience now, they've had their hands on the equipment, they've had uh, the opportunity to try to uh, discuss, as real scientists do, um, the protocols that they've used and, and tighten that up. Now, they are ready to talk about what kind of questions they have, okay? So the, we change to a different color post-it note for this. Right now, it seems a little weird, but trust me, it works. You need to have them use the same color post notes that, that you have. And here I'm using pink. So some of the things they may be wondering is, um, they may be wondering, why does it spin? That sort of thing. So again, you need to become, this is, you need to have it come from them as opposed to you giving it to them. Um, why does it spin? Uh, can we make it fall faster? Okay. Whoops, I should post it. And again, your students, you have some students that are running way ahead of you with this. They've got all kinds of ideas. They're working independently on their own. You've got other students that are staying with you at the class. You have other ones that are just trying to catch up and they are uh, putting the post-its on as we go. Okay, they would want to change maybe the direction of the spin. Can they get it to spin backwards? All those kinds of things come up. Okay. So at this point, you can say, all right, well, there are, there are different types of questions and we need to sort those questions into different uh, ways of answering them. What we want to do is we want to do an experiment. So what are the types of things, what kind of questions do you have that we could do experiments on, right? That's the next step with this. So let's say the, the students and we have this discussion, what we wanna look at is we're gonna look at fall time and we're gonna look at things that affect how much time the object or this gyrocopter takes to fall. So some of the things that those would be includes would be, okay, so we're gonna make it fall faster. So maybe the, the way that it spins, the direction it spins may cause it to fall differently. The fact that we get, um, they may want to talk about the the wings, the little yellow post-its that are on here, okay? They may be talking about the wing length. They may come up with the wing width. They may even talk about the, if you notice there are paper clips on the bottom, okay? So they may want to talk about the number of paper clips that are on here. Okay. Everything that could affect the fall time is listed. So you try to come up with an exhaustive list here, and that's why this box here is open. Okay. So in step 2B here, what could we change or vary about the object or event that may affect the way that we measure or what we measure or observe? So paper clips, uh, size, the type of paper that it's made out of, all kinds of things the kids will come up with. Okay. Once they've done that, then we need to do the move to the next set of uh, posters. And we'll do that in just a second. So moving on with the penguin copter, the kids, the, your students have had a look at the fall time and uh, they just brainstormed a bunch of things that may affect how fast the uh, penguin copter, our little penguin copter here is gonna fall. So now we need to direct their attention to the third poster in the series. So we're gonna uh, start arranging some of these variables a little bit. And this is where the 
the, the two color post-its are quite helpful. So what we've done is we've taken the, 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 the time that's gonna fall, okay, and we moved to step three. So what will we change? We're gonna change one variable and we're gonna measure, we will measure or observe this result. So we're gonna measure or observe the fall time and the students can select one thing to change. So out of all these brainstorming ideas they came up with, they're gonna select one. Or, again, you're the teacher, you're in charge, you can decide that the whole class is gonna look at the same, have the same experiment. And if it's the first time through, that's what I'd suggest. You, you know, just to keep yourself sane, you'll pick the one. So you're gonna have everybody look at the length of the wings, okay? And that's gonna be the change variable. So there, we're gonna, everyone's gonna look at the length of the wings and how much time the gyrocopter takes to fall, okay? Step 3B, is what will we not change? So the things that we're not gonna change, again, the class has already had the discussion. They've already came up, come up with the ideas of everything that could possibly change the fall time. So if it's not part of what we're actually changing, then we need to keep track of it. So these are the unchanged variables. So the direction that it spins has to go here. The width of the wings has to stay the same. The number of paper clips has to stay the same. Okay. And there again, your students are going to come up with all kinds of additional ideas of things that they need to keep the same. Okay. This lets them again the, the two colors uh, let them distinguish between what they're observing, what their actual measurements going to do. In an older, in, a, in, a, in the, the more advanced stages of these posters, that would be called the dependent variable. For this set, just beginners, we again we refer to that as being what's measured or observed. The independent variable is the thing that the scientist manipulates. For the first set of posters, we talk about the changed variable. And this is the language that's used here. Okay, but there's where the sticky note comes in. And then the control variables, the things that aren't gonna change, are all the things that have to stay the same before we can conduct our experiment. Okay, back again, we're looking at the gyrocopter, the pengucopter, if you will, dropping and falling. Now your students have already gone through poster three. We've organized the various uh, variables. We've discussed, we've shown that uh, we're measuring fall time and we're going to ask them each to manipulate the wing length and keep everything else the same. Control for everything else. The final poster, poster four, has some writing stems in it. So again, here's the literacy connection that we're talking about here. Uh, we want them to be very, very clear, your students before they begin, to be very clear about what question they want to explore. So the step four says, what is the question we want to explore? If we change the changed variable, which is the purple square, so if we change the wing length, then what will happen to the fall time compared to our control? So again, it's just a matter of moving those post-its over and now the students can write their own question and have that in front of them the entire time that they're going through the uh, process here. The last step before we let them loose, or step five I should say is, what is our prediction? We also want to encourage them to make a prediction. So state how we will change the variable and predict the outcome, right? Again, the writing on these posters, it's, it's the smaller stuff is for the teacher. The larger stuff is for the students to write. So in this writing stand, we predict that if, we change, if, we, if the wing length is longer, then the fall time will increase or decrease, whatever their prediction is. Or they may have another prediction statement. We predict that if the wing length is shorter, then the fall time will increase or decrease. They have to make a decision. Try to uh, avoid the fence sitters. People that, you know, if we change the wing length then the fall time will change is not a good prediction statement. They have to state a direction. Uh, in the more senior classes or the, uh, you're trying to get, if they can even quantify that. So if we increase the wing length by 50%, the fall time will decrease by 20% whatever that is. So it's come up with some sort of quantitative value there. The last step here is we think this will happen become. This is because, this is the rationale, the because statement. So we separate the prediction statement, a nice, clean, clear statement from the reasons why. So when students start to predict that, uh, if we change to make the wings longer, it will fall faster. When they say the word because, you stop them at that point. Because comes later, the rationale comes later. Again, they may be linking it to text that you've given them, uh, their own background experience, the experimentation they did when they, they tried to duplicate the original gyrocopter falling. They'll have all kinds of, of ways to make a, a reasoned 
explanation as to why they're making that prediction. The very last step that you should have them go through before you let them loose with their experiments is they should design their own data collection table. It could be something as simple as a tally sheet with a junior class or primary class, or it could be columns and rows with the various, with, you know, with how are you gonna change the, the variables? What's your data collection sheet look like? How many different, how many different wing links are you gonna look at? How many different drop times are you gonna actually record? Okay, once they have that, and they have the, the writings, they've got their, their question in front of them, they've made their prediction, they've got a basic rationale, and they've got a data collection sheet, you're ready to go. It's important too, this seems like a long process, these four posters. This is the initiating and planning phase for the Smarter Science Framework. It's only the first of four uh, stages that we go through. But you need to spend the time with initiate and plan because once the kids understand what it is that they're trying to do and you're very, very clear, it's well worth the time.